Good evening, Vinyl Community. North Carolina Vinyl Picker here. It's Saturday night. Time for the show. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about a few things. Uh, we're going to talk about some artists that we lost in 2021. Um, pickups that I've picked up. Uh, things here locally. CDs from a thrift store. And uh, birthday gifts from my son. And some Amazon uh, gifts um, that uh, the wife got for me for my birthday. And uh, we're going to talk about the five videos from 2021 that uh, my my views, top five views, um, the most views, uh, ranking the shows. So uh, let's get into it. And uh, first thing is I got some pickups from a uh, from a couple of thrift stores, and uh, they didn't have any records there that uh, I wanted to bring home. So I did find a few records, and uh, I played a couple of these and they sound really good and make sure that when you're if you're picking up uh, CDs for a dollar a dollar and a half you look at them good you open them up and you inspect them and you make sure they're, they're nice and clean and they're not dirty and not all scratched up you don't want to be paying a buck or two for something that's scratched up and you can't use so uh, this one here um, store that I went to there was a uh, greatest hits of John Lennon and I thought maybe I'd pick that up. That'd be nice to have. But when I looked at it, it was it was beat. So I just gave it to the lady. And she says, you don't want it? I said, well, no. If I can't play it, there's no sense of buying it. They don't even look at them when they put them on the shelf. They just grab a, a stack of them. They hang them up there. They put them on the shelf. And they don't. some of these places don't even bother to look at them. So just word of caution. Make sure you look at them good before you buy them. And a record, too. Pull the, pull the record out of the jacket. If it doesn't have a nice shiny gloss, if it's all beat and scratched, and, you know, if it's only a dollar and you want the, the cover, uh, the cardboard cover, the sleeve, well, I guess you could use that and frame it. That'd be kind of cool. But the record, you won't be able to play. So just spend your money wisely. Um, these are the um, ones I picked up. And these some of these are doubles that I already had. But uh, I'm not going to leave Pat Matheny Group. Uh, we live here. I'm not going to leave it behind for a dollar. I already had this CD. Uh, it's a great CD of a Pat Matheny group. And for a dollar, now I got another copy. Uh, one I've been looking for, uh, Moody Blues, The Other Side of Life. I didn't have this one on CD, so I picked this one up. And this one here was really nice. And this one here ended up being, looks like a, um, it says made in the USA, but it's got some uh, foreign writing on it. Yeah. So nice and clean on the back so for a dollar a piece and then I got a pair of CDs from uh, Lorena McKinnett she's a uh, Gaelic singer she's from I believe she's from Canada and uh, I got these two here these are two of my favorites from her if you pick these up give these a listen they're only a dollar usually you can find them in the thrift store just like Enigma and a few other bands um, and uh, sometimes you find Clanid there or Maura Brennan. Uh, these are all great artists that you can pick up for a dollar, dollar and a half. But Lorena McKinnon, she's just awesome. And this one here is called The Book of Secrets. And this one here is called The Visit. The Visit's my favorite uh, of hers. And I think I got like five or six copies of this. But every time I find one, I pick it up and I put it in my library. Um, I found this one here. The Forrest Gump soundtrack, but when I got it home, there's only one CD in there. So lesson learned. It's supposed to be two CDs. Make sure you look and make sure you got the complete set. Yes, it was only a dollar, but I only got the first CD and the second one wasn't in there. But there's a lot of great songs from the 60s and the 70s in there. Everybody knows the soundtrack, the songs that they played on Forrest Gump. Um, Ricky Lee Jones, Flying Cowboys. I didn't have this one. I've never heard this one. I think I've only ever heard her first album. But this one here was real nice, and the CD was real nice. And I'm going to give that a lesson. I like Ricky Lee Jones. And I'm, Oh, this is one I've been wanting. It's one of the Bee Gees. You know, I love the Bee Gees, and uh, this one here was Still Waters. It's one of their later albums. And um, this is where I came in. There's another one of their uh, CDs that I want to find. I uh, haven't found that one yet. And there's the Brothers Gibb. And this album here, again, nice and clean and definitely worth a buck. It's really good stuff. This one here is sealed. Uh, Sarah McLaughlin, Mirrorball. 
it was nice to find this. I don't know I'll have any other Sarah McLaughlin, but I know she's good. Um, this is a live recording, and my nephew really likes her, so I picked this one up. This came out in 1999. And Roger Hodgkin. Roger Hodgkins was a piano player and a co-songwriter for the band Supertramp. This is one of his solo albums. I think I already have two copies of this, but I found another one, and it was nice and clean. So for a buck, I picked it up. So I got that. So that was a nice haul. Even though I didn't have any um, records that day, I picked up a few CDs. Then I went um, to an antique mall with my, my wife and my son, and um, he said for me to get some records that day. Uh, my birthday, which was on the 30th. So I got the Rolling Stones. Get your ya -yas out. I'm going to give that a spin in a few minutes. And this is a great album I used to have. This is one of the very first albums I ever owned. I owned uh, Keith Emerson and the Nice and a double album. And this one here and Sticky Fingers. I think those were like the first three records I ever owned. And uh, Sweet Baby James, James Taylor. Those might have been the first four albums I ever owned. But this one here, great album. Looking forward to giving that a spin. And um, Barry Gibb from the Bee Gees. This is his newest uh, solo album. And this came out in 2000, uh, looks like 2016. I don't think he's released anything since then. But this is going to be really good. I'm looking forward to this. And then the third album I got was um, Donovan, Mellow Yellow. This was, uh, I think it was, it's a mono, it's a mono version. I believe it was only $6. So that's pretty cool. And uh, this one I can take out and show you. That, but the other two are sealed. This one looks really nice and clean. Whenever I get them from this guy, this vendor in this antique mall here in Hickory, North Carolina, they're always nice and clean and shiny. This album is old. So for six bucks and being a mono press, I wasn't going to leave that one behind. And I like Donovan, so I'm just starting to get into his catalog. So that's going to be nice to listen to that. Get rid of that trash. And then I got some things from uh, Amazon. I was able to get... Uh, Massey Hall, um, Neil Young, live, 1971. They had these on sale on Amazon, and they got a good, really good price on these. I think this was like less than 10 or right around $10 for that. And then I got the uh, Steely Dan Live, Northeast Corridor. I like getting the uh, live albums on CD. That way you don't have to get up three or four times to flip the album and um, I, I like to listen to the live uh, show straight through I don't want to be having to get up and listen to three songs and then flip it over listen to three songs and flip it over I don't mind doing that on a regular uh, studio album but for a live recording I prefer to have the CD or the or the concert itself if this is available on blu-ray I might end up getting that but, uh, yeah, so this is going to be good to listen to. And I picked up this here. Neil Young and Crazy Horse, new studio album, Barn. A lot of people in the vinyl community have been showing this. Still has this, the uh, cellophane on it, so it's a, little, uh, it's a little shiny there. It's got a little hype sticker on there, not much of one. But I've already heard this a bunch of times, but I've been listening to it on my phone and uh, streaming it on my Apple uh, phone. So that's a pretty good haul. Um, oh, I got one. I got two more. Oh. Be careful there. Up on the floor. I got this in the mail yesterday. This is a uh, Red Rain, Peter Gabriel. This is an EP. Uh, I think this completes, and this is a promo, and this completes all of the 12-inch uh, singles from Up. So, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, from the album So. And then I got this, which was pretty cool. 
Look at all them stamps. This came from France, and I haven't opened it yet because I was going to show you all this here. And then I was going to do an unboxing. So let's open this thing up and look at it. I think I'll keep it because of the, the, the stamps on here. This looks so cool. What did, oh, look at this. Linda Ronstadt, Blue Bayou. And this is a um, French 45. I think I paid $5 for this, for the record, and for them to send it here from France. But you wouldn't think. This is pretty nice. It's on the asylum. Everybody knows I love Linda Ronstadt. I'm going to put that right over here for now. But you wouldn't think that all of these stamps would only be would be $5. Because that's all it cost me. But they all came in. That's how they came in. So that's pretty cool. Um, my top five uh, videos of the year. My top five videos of the year of what I made... These are the views, how many views that the, the listeners out there uh, watched my videos. And I appreciate every one of you. Um, looking forward to this new year and um, increasing my subs. If you like what you see in my show, hit the bell and sub me up. And uh, my top five are, uh, well, the first one was 163 views. Um, show me your promo records. Everybody loved that video. And... Um, I'm going to be doing another one. I'm going to do a part two to that because I've gotten a lot of promo since then. And I'm going to rewatch my video and pull out the ones I've already shown. And then I'll probably have 30 or 40 um, ones that I've been pulling out of my uh, collection that I haven't shown yet. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And uh, that's number one. Coming in at number two is 158 views. Um, this one here is the Porcupine Tree 2021 or 2022 after the incident. This is, I was talking to you about the new Porcupine Tree album that's going to be released next year. Uh, we don't know Porcupine Tree. They're a band with Stephen Wilson. Uh, Stephen Wilson's my favorite artist. Uh, and so, yeah, so I was discussing that and um, at 158 views. Next one down is 150 views. Uh, and that one was the push to 100 subs. And that was a few uh, months back. And uh, Rachel helped me with that and helped me get uh, up to uh, 150, 100, I mean 100 subs. And it got 150 views so far uh, as of today. Um, 85 views was the beginning. That was my very first video. That was back when I first started about six months ago. Uh, number five, 79 views was the promo contest winner. That's why I announced the winner of the promo contest. And um, so that was pretty cool. And then, so I really enjoyed doing those five. And I'm going to look at those five and see how I could go ahead and improve on doing another show to incorporate some of those topics and uh, give the viewers what they want to see. So, yeah, look forward to that here coming up in the next week or so. Um, then we... Uh, we lost a lot of artists this year, and I don't want to be playing any music on my show because they give you a, they give you strikes. Uh, YouTube gives you a, a strike, and then I don't know how many. I'm not real sure on that. If you do like three or ten, or then they turn off your channel. I don't, I don't want to get any trouble with YouTube. So I'm not playing any music in the background. But if I was to play some music, it would be for Graham Edge, uh, the drummer for the Moody Blues. I've been listening to the Moody Blues probably for about 50 years, a long time. And I've seen them probably five or six, maybe seven times. And that's one night I'm going to show all my concert stuff. I have them all from back when I first started seeing the concerts. Um, but we also lost B.J. Thomas this year. Uh, raindrops keep falling on my head. Uh, some of you people from a certain age will know who he is. Uh, Jim Steinman, uh, 
I remember being out one day driving around and heard that he had died. He was the, the he did the lyrics for Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell. Jim Steinman was the man who um, wrote the words for uh, Meatloaf to sing. Uh, Robbie Steinhardt, the, uh, uh, he had um, a patch on one eye. He was blind in one eye. He, he most uh, pretty recognizable. Um, I see in Kansas, <coughs> excuse me, I see in Kansas, it was my very first show uh, with Marshall Tucker. And um, he came out with a solo album just before he passed away. And he was with the band, I believe, the entire time that uh, he was uh, in music. He, he was from the first album all the way to their last album. Um, and I mentioned Graham Edge already. Um, Charlie Watts, the drummer for um, the Rolling Stones, he passed away this year. That's when I play that Get Your Yaya's Out. I'm going to be listening to Charlie. Uh, Chick Corea, um, jazz keyboardist, just awesome. I have lots of his music. And John Goodsall, another jazz uh, guitarist. John Goodsall played with Brand X. Brand X was a jazz fusion band that Phil Collins uh, was in uh, for most of their albums. And John Goodsall was an extraordinary guitar player with the band. And John Goodsall also did some side projects. David Longden um, from Big Big Train. Uh, Big Big Train is a, a newer uh, progressive rock band. They're really good if you uh, listen to uh, the newer prog. Uh, you know, it's not 70s, 80s prog. This is what's prog that's come out in the 2000s. And David Longden was an exceptional singer. And um, he redid the uh, vocals for Spectral Mornings, the Steve Hackett song. They added, actually added, that's a, a, a song that Steve Hackett had on his um, Spectral Mornings album, was an instrumental. But David Longden, along with uh, Rob Reed from Magenta, they went ahead and added vocals and David Longden sung the song, Spectral Mornings, and they wrote the words for it and everything. They never had words. So they just wrote words for that song. And it's, if you can probably find it on YouTube, it is, it'll just, it's, it's, it's like bring tears to your eyes. It's so great. Uh, John Miles died this year. Uh, John Miles was a guitar player. I think he was multi-instrumentalist. He was on some of the Alan Parsons Projects albums. John Miles, British. Tim Bogart from Bogart App and a Peace. Uh, he passed away this year. Michael Nesmith from the Monkees. We lost so many great artists this year. Phil Spector, who did a lot of stuff with the Beatles and other stuff back in the 60s. And then did some squirrely stuff at the end of his uh, lifetime. Um, Jay Black and the Americans. Um, Ron Bushy, the Iron Butterfly. I believe he was the drummer. Uh, Don Everly, the Everly Brothers. Some of these artists are going back a few years. Mary Wilson from the Supremes. She passed away this year. And Dusty Hill, um, let's not forget about Dusty Hill from ZZ Top, uh, exceptional guitar player. I've seen them once in live. They were really good on stage, a lot of energy. I'm sure a lot of you people out there have, uh, have seen them over the years. Well, we're right at about, almost getting on almost 20 minutes, so we'll end this. And I'll be back Tuesday night. I'm gonna try to get out um, uh, tomorrow or Monday. And I'm going to look around and see what I can find. I'll try to find some more things to show you guys and gals out there. You guys be safe. It's uh, New Year's Day. A lot of people are out on the roads. They're uh, out getting uh, food with their family and friends. Uh, be safe on the roads out there. And um, I love you all. And I'm looking forward to doing some more um, shows in this next year. So we'll talk to you all later. And uh, have a good evening. Bye for now.